Do you still love him? Of course I still love him. I think I'll always love Michael, but I fucked it up because, like you, I expected perfection. Yeah, I thought it was supposed to be like mom and dad, you know? And when we started to have problems, I didn't want to do the work. I just kind of checked out because I didn't think we were supposed to have problems. I thought it just meant that, that we had a bad marriage, so it, right? But I think the mom and dad's marriage is unique. No, it's not. No, they just work at it. And they take time for each other, and they talk to each other, and they, they appreciate each other. And they don't let little insignificant things turn into these huge impenetrable walls. I just wish they had shown us that part of it and, and not made it look so easy. Yeah, so they uh, <laughs> kind of said it. Terrible example, after all. Yeah. God, how absurd is that? You just can't win. I just want to add how wonderful it is for us that you two found each other and decided to make this commitment. Because after tomorrow, everything changes. I know it's hard to believe that a marriage would mean that much. It seems more like a symbolic thing, but... It does. It just strengthens and deepens your relationship in ways you can't even imagine. So good luck. It isn't always a picnic. It takes work, but no question. This is one of the best things we get to do in life. Uh, thank you. <laughs> well, there it is. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. I cannot believe you live here. You seem to have a really great life here. I'm really happy for you. Thank you. I'm also more than a little bit jealous. So move out here. <laughs> yeah. What, why not? Oh, come on. Like a million reasons. It's far away. Uh, it's really expensive. I have no real career to speak of. Oh my God, that's horrible. Right? I, I don't even know what you do. I don't even know what you majored in. Yeah, we have a lot to catch up on. And a lot to put behind us, too. Yeah, we do. I, I have never known you to be superstitious. No, it's not, hmm, it's not superstition. It's more like, I had really started to change the way I was thinking about the possible future. And what's the greatest possible future but spending the rest of my life with Christopher. And, I mean, a marriage is supposed to be forever, right? So, now's the time. Daniel, he's gonna love it. Dearest friends and family, we are here tonight to celebrate the marriage of Christopher and Daniel. I now have the honor of marrying these two. After almost being the one to prevent this from even happening altogether. <laughs> this incredible impromptu ceremony is a testament to their love and devotion to one another and should serve as an example to all of us. I unfortunately got that memo a little late and ate an entire pint of ice cream in my misery. <laughs> I mean, you two are like the most supportive parents I've ever met. Oh, thank you. I, I mean, that's not always been easy. Uh, I just can't imagine not having this. And parenting, everybody parents differently. Most of the time, I think we don't know what the hell we're doing. You just do what you think is right and hope for the best. And every parent loves their children more than those children will ever know until they have kids of their own.
Yeah, I, I know. I mean, obviously we don't have the best relationship, but, you know. I know, I know they love me. Well, that's good. That's important. I don't know. The, the whole thing. The idea of spending the rest of your life with one person. You know, marriage in general, it's just kind of freaks me out. It's so final. Well, you, I mean, ideally. Yeah. So marriage doesn't freak you out. I didn't say that. I mean, honestly, I, I never really gave it much thought until it became a headline. You know, it wasn't an option for me, so you know, I never really saw it as some sort of goal. Really, yeah, marriage was irrelevant. You know, marriage was something that straight people did because they thought they were supposed to. And half of those end in divorce, so, you know, really, why would it have any meaning for me? For some reason, I didn't expect to hear that from you. I don't feel that way now. I assume Daniel told you about coming out to us. Yeah. Yeah. What he didn't tell you, because he doesn't know, is his mom and I spent the rest of that night in tears. Really? Yeah. I mean, I... I knew you were disappointed. Oh, no, 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 no. no. not disappointed, no. No. Um, no, to understand this, you would have to have kids. No parent wants their child to have a difficult life. You want nothing but a happy, pain-free, long, beautiful life for them. Um, even though you know intellectually that the challenges and disappointments are essential. You know, a life without those things would be devoid of meaning. You still feel what you feel. That's hell when your kid is in pain. And even with the growing acceptance, we knew that Daniel would have a harder life than he would if he were straight. I mean, he could be discriminated against, harassed, prejudged, and... You, you want your children to figure out who they are and be happy and be proud of who they are, but it's impossible not to be worried or concerned when you know they're gonna face more challenges. We got over all that. And the challenges and disappointments made them stronger, better people. We couldn't be more proud of the man that Daniel has become. Or the woman that Rachel has become. So I can't really speak for your parents, Christopher, but I think the point I'm trying to make to you is maybe they were feeling some of the similar things to what we felt. And it's more about the idea of the pain of knowing that you were dealt some extra challenges. But regardless of that, you now have another set of parents who love you and are as proud as can be of the man you are. Oh. You guys, wow. I love you. <laughs> you, too. you don't feel worthy of him, do you? I don't know. Is that what you see? You know, I don't know the guy very well, but he is impressive. I mean, he's older and he's successful. He's got a great relationship with his parents and he's really, really, really smart. And I, I don't know, I'm intimidated. I never really thought about it that way, I guess. I mean, I have asked myself more than once why he's with me. I don't know what to do. Do you still want to marry him? Of course. Then let it go. You don't need to win. I'm not trying to win. I just want him to stop keeping secrets. I mean, I didn't know anything about him and Emma until today. And, and all that stuff about his parents, none of that. I, I'm just worried about marrying someone who keeps secrets so easily. Well, I wouldn't say easily. From what I saw, it looks like it's eating him alive. Really? Yeah. And look. You'll have the rest of your lives to discover all the gory details. It's just not worth screwing up what you two have. Unless you really don't trust him. No, I... I trust him. 
Well, then that's it. That's what's important. Fine, we went out more than a couple of times, but we never clicked romantically at all. There's nothing more to it than that. So why don't you tell me that? I don't know. Because I didn't want you to be threatened by our relationship, our, our friendship, because that's all that it is, a friendship. Fine, and I accept that, and I believe that. The difference is, I knew you weren't telling me everything, and I knew why, and I didn't care. I trusted you. You, on the other hand, don't trust me enough to let me leave out information that is better be left out. You're a hypocrite. Okay, fine, I'm a hypocrite, sure. I told you a little lie about Jacob, but you've left out huge important chunks of your life. It's like I don't even know you anymore. So then why do you want to marry someone that you don't know? What, you want to call this off? You? Uh, guys, um, how about you take a minute and, and just cool off? There's a lot to process right now. Yeah. You have to call him. You do. You have to tell him how you feel. What you've figured out. Oh, it's too late for that. There's too many hurt feelings and legal bills. You don't know that. Come in. Hi. Can we talk? Yes. I'd love to. Thank you. You're welcome. Call him. I'm serious. <sighs> this is a joyous event, remember? <laughs> yes, and my getting stressed out is not a comment on that. I wish I would have pushed hard to have you get it catered. Well, I thought that cooking would calm me down. It usually does. I just want everything to be perfect. You use that word a lot, you know. How many times do I have to tell you, babe, perfection does not exist? Okay, if you keep chasing it, you're just always gonna be disappointed. I'm sorry. I'm just an erotic mess. And you're all mine. <laughs> You know, I think part of it was the gay marriage thing. You know, marriage is marriage. You know, it's not gay marriage or straight marriage or traditional <laughs> marriage. I mean, it just seems really simple. People can either get married or they can't. You know, people are created equal or they're not. You, know, you can legally discriminate against a particular group or you can't, you know? That's the bigger issue for me. If the government wants to get involved in this, they need to be f***ing consistent, okay? I don't need anyone to define happiness for me. Certainly don't need anyone telling me that my idea of happiness is somehow less valid than somebody else's. Are you finished? I think I am, yeah. It's very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> and I agree. But personally, my favorite is the sanctity of marriage, people. Because there is so much sanctity in, you know, getting shit-faced in a quickie wedding in Vegas and then divorced two days later. Oh, Brittany. <laughs> Was she the first person you told? Of course. Who else would I have told? But wait, I thought that, I thought you said your, you told your mom. Yeah, eventually. She cried. <laughs> Uh, and your dad? No, I, I knew my mom would tell him, and I, I didn't really want to deal with his reaction. Did that not go well? It never happened. What do you mean? I mean, it never happened. I never brought it up. She never brought it up. We just didn't talk about it. I didn't know that. It's because there's nothing to know. Did you tell them about the wedding? Not yet. Uh, I mean... I'm, I'm gonna tell them, obviously, I will tell them. It's just, we don't really, um, we don't really talk about this aspect of my life. Which is just another way Daniel and I are opposites. I mean, you two are like the most supportive parents I've ever met. Oh, thank you. Do you know 
that it took me a really long time to realize that it wasn't my fault that you were gay. <laughs> That's really stupid, right? Not as stupid as me thinking you didn't want to be my friend because I was gay. Did you really think that? Of course I did. What else would I thought? I was too self-absorbed to realize that I probably broke your heart. You did, you know. I know. I did. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm... You needed me. You were dealing with these, these huge issues and I wasn't there for you. Your so-called best friend. I wasn't there for you. I'm the one who was self-absorbed. God, I wish you could go back. Knowing what we know now, it's... I know. It's totally bizarre trying to remember thinking how you thought about things before you knew the things that you know now, you know? I'm sorry, did that make any sense at all? I think so. It's like you can't go back and remember looking at words and not knowing how to read them. Exactly. It's practically impossible for me to put myself back into my teenage brain. Oh, it's a terrifying thought. Never want to do that. Of course, there's the um, age difference. Oh, uh, here we go. Well, how big of an age difference? Like nothing, like a couple of years. No big deal. Like 10 years. Oh, 10, 10 years is not nothing. It's something. It is not 10 years. It's more like seven. And in reality, day to day, it's not even anything. I mean, I don't feel it. Not really. Yeah, right. Come on, if you guys didn't know, you'd have no idea. Botox. <laughs> he doesn't Botox. Oh, sure, he doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> hey, come on, baby. I'm just f***ing with you. So you're not at all concerned about being in different stages of your life? Different stages? Guys, he's 40. He's not 80. And no, okay, I'm not concerned. Because love is love. And when you know, you know. It doesn't hurt that he's obsessed with you. He is. Oh, okay, well that explains everything. What can I say? I'm adorable. Okay, you're, you're crazy. Could you please just do this for me? No, the pen is a great gift. He's gonna be moved to tears, trust me. No, 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 not now. I mean, it, it, what is it? It's a $300 pen. I, I'm sorry, no, we should, we should like book something last minute in, in Palm Springs. I mean, I, I could take the whole week off. You don't need to one-up his friends, okay? You both got him beautiful, meaningful gifts. I mean, he's a lucky man. And it, it doesn't matter anyway. If he didn't get you a thing, would it change the way you feel about him? Would it make you not want to spend the rest of your life with him? Of course not. So? So I, I feel like I'm in say anything, right? I mean, they, they reunite him with his long lost childhood friend and I get him a pen. Yeah, because the fact that it's a pen is what's important about it? Daniel, you know, you're in a relationship, not a competition, okay? I mean, you're supposed to be the more mature one. Grow the f up already. You say the sweetest things. <laughs> to all of you, tomorrow is the big day, but tonight is for the people we love the most. Give it to me. Of your devotion. I just want everything to be perfect. How many times do I have to tell you, babe, perfection does not exist? Do you think they'll make it? They just seem so different, don't you think? In some ways. I mean, this entire weekend could be a complete disaster. Well, it'd be a shame to see your head explode before I hear you say I do. So, are you seeing anyone? Wow, we're gonna open with that, huh? Well, I mean, I said, how are you first? Oh, you did, yeah. yeah. Bradley and I chipped in and got you a little something. What is it? Turn around. <laughs> Surprise. We have a lot to catch up on. And a lot to put behind us, too. I'm dying to hear more about you and Christopher. Daniel, you're in a relationship, not a competition. You say the sweetest things. Look, I know you're disappointed with me. You don't trust me, because you're deciding what I need to know and when I need to know it. Mr. Holier Than Thou? Then, then what about you and Jacob? The idea of spending the rest of your life with one person. What you guys are doing is not smart. I don't know what to do. I mean, why does absolutely everything need to be said? After 
tomorrow, everything changes. You guys ready? <laughs>